Sun Monani guys, welcome to the fountain where it runneth over. I am Tabiso Mangela and I am pretty excited to welcome you to yet another week here at the fountain where it runneth over. I'm particularly excited because last week we were not here. Mm, I was just, you know, a little bit tired and I was going through um, quite a lot and I just needed a break and I just needed to breathe and I was able to breathe and I was able to you know to, to find myself just in the presence of the Lord and just seek his face and thank you so much for the messages of support I thank you so much um for the love and the appreciation you know I I really really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart and everybody here at the fountain and um to our regular family thank you so much uh for for the support and thank you so much for joining us today and to our newbies our first time subscribers if you are watching this video for the first time thank you so much for joining us today and i hope you i hope you will have a good time and if you haven't subscribed please click on the subscription um button and please put a ring on it uh, so that you can get every video that we drop every week tuesday here at the fountain and um so guys, today I'll be discussing something very important as we're starting the new month. I'll be starting a new series called um, Not Alone. And it is a relationship series um, that is based on relationships, but not relationships, you know, necessarily romantic but i'm going to focus specifically on friendships and how that can enhance your spiritual life and how you should you know effectively surround yourself with people who number one know you and understand you and who are conscious not only about the, who, not who are only self-conscious but who are also god conscious and conscious of who you are because the people who are around us our closest circle um I watch, you know, my pastor often calls uh, destiny anchor partners. They are the, the anchor partners that often, you know, help you towards your destiny. So it is important that you surround yourself with the right people. And it is important that you surround yourself with people because as human beings, it is not good to be alone. And for some context today, I'll be reading from the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. Mm. So the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 18 says that the Lord said the, the Lord said it is not good that the man should be alone. I'll make him a helper fit for him. And today I'll be, you know, um, I'll be discussing the message under the subject the fitness test. So I believe that the friends that you have around you, specifically those that are in your inner circle, today I'll be discussing a whole lot about your inner circle, that your inner circle should, should pass what I call the fitness test. So, so they should be able to weigh out certain characteristics and certain qualities that are important for them to be in your inner circle. You know, there needs to be requirements for people to enter your inner circle, there needs to be requirements for people to be close to you and to have access to you because the people who have access to you have access to your ear and fundamentally they have access to your spirit because people who have, who have access to your ears often have access to your spirit. That's why it is important for you to surround yourself with the most, with the most, um, with the most, that's why it is important for you to surround yourself with people who are able to enhance the qualities that you have, who are able to enhance the good that you are, and who are able to help you towards your destiny. And over the next few weeks, I'll have one of my, you know, my, my closest friends, you know, as we'll be discussing these issues. And as we'll be discussing how to understand people's fitness, how to, you know, do the fitness test and how to be able to realize whether people are fit enough to go in, to come into your circle, because not everybody can come into your circle because you need to be very selective about the people that come into your circle because they need to go through the fitness test. But first, let's go to the beginning and explore relationships in general. So uh, God made everything that he made and he made a man and realized that it is not good for men to be alone. 
Number one, for procreation. For procreation to be there, there needed to be two people. But also for social reasons. Men are generally social people. Men can live alone. Men can be isolated. People can be isolated. People need other people to thrive. People need other people to be able to pursue their destiny. And I don't buy into this idea that is going around that we necessarily don't need people and we can you know, cut off people anytime we want. We can just you know just cut off people and people are that disposable. I don't believe in that because what I essentially believe is this that God made us as social beings for us to be there to relate with people and it is possible for you to be an introvert or an extrovert that is irrelevant to the conversation this is my chat my chat is that everybody needs people to survive uh, one thing that I learned earlier in my Christianhood was this that mudimu khanamato God doesn't have hands. He uses people to be able to work. He uses the people that are around us. He uses the people that, you know, we come across each and every day to be able to pursue in our lives that which he has destined us to, he has destined. Therefore, God doesn't just, you know, come out and, you know, through a great cloud and then speak to you and do all that he does, give you a job, give you, a... that's why you need to be very careful how you deal with people. That's why you need to be very careful how, you know, you, you interact with people as much as your relationship with God is important, your relationship with your fellow men is important. That's why you need to treat people as best as you can, because God can use anybody. God is a barrier breaking God, as I said on my first video. And God will break every barrier to talk to you. God will break every barrier to communicate to you. That's why it is important for you to surround yourself with people. And as people, we have that urge to surround ourselves with people. We might be introverts, we might not be, you know, extremely social people, but we have people that are close to us whom we constantly communicate with. We might be extroverts having a whole lot of people, but we need people close to us. Therefore, your, how you are socially doesn't necessarily matter whether you are an introvert or an extrovert. You need people. So that's the first thing I want to clear out. That God realized that this man that he had created, this human being that he has created, needs other people for social reasons. Because he is a social being. We are not like snakes where we can live in isolation and, you know, meet just to mate. No. We are human beings and we meet because we socialize together. We raise children within a family system we are meant for that P children need to grow up in a family system for them to be as effective as they possibly can be and i'm not saying that people who don't grow up in a who, who often grow up in a family system are all um effective people i am not necessarily say, saying that but what i am saying is that that the most proven way to have effective children is raising them up in a conducive family system where they can thrive and where they have enough social skills to be able to get out of the world and be human beings that are decent, human beings that are loving, and human beings that can relate to other people because in this world we live with people and we need to relate with people, right? So we are social beings. Therefore, that comes to us realizing that now as we become social people God created Eve as somebody who was fit for him and it means that as human beings we need people who are fit for us so that we can pursue our destiny because also Jesus God created sorry God created Eve to be a destiny anchor partner so this man was a destiny, this woman was a, a destiny and partner. Adam had a destiny. Adam had a destiny to name animals, to nurture animals, to take care of the garden. Therefore, he needed a partner because that was a whole lot of work. So he needed a partner to be able to pursue that which God had created him to do. Therefore, God created somebody who was fit for him specifically. Somebody who was not like any other person. He didn't randomly create anybody. He is specific in who he created for Adam. He created somebody fit for him. Now, that is important for us to realize because now we realize that not anybody can just, you know, have access, can budge into our lives. No. They need to pass the fitness test. So what 
is the fitness test. But before I go into the fitness test, I want to explore something much more uh, amazing before we go into the fitness test, how we relate with human beings in general. So Jesus has a discussion, um, you know, with, with a lawyer, with a prominent lawyer in the Bible, in the book of Luke. Um, I think it's found in, in the book of Mark, Luke, and, you know, uh, Matthew. But I'm, I'm really interested in the book of Luke, how he explores it. And Jesus speaks to this lawyer, and this lawyer, you know, he's busy talking, and he says to him, Teacher, so tell me, what is my fastest way? I think this is what he was asking. He was asking... I want to know what is the fastest way to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. I want to, I want to, you know, I want to go into heaven. I want to, you know, to be part of the crew that goes to heaven. So how do I book my tickets to heaven? So Jesus says to him, listen, um, the greatest commandments are two. So the first one is love God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. But secondly, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And the lawyer becomes, you know, tries to find a loophole. The lawyer says, okay, I understand that you are saying I should love my neighbor, but who's my neighbor? Who do you consider my neighbor? Because he's trying to find loopholes. The first sermon that I listened by Bishop T.D. Jakes, I think it was 2011, if I'm not mistaken, 2011-12. The first sermon that I listened uh, by him was, I think, on TBN. And he was preaching about love has no loopholes. Um, that often as human beings, we try to find loopholes in love, right? We try to find ways not to love people. We try to find ways not to embrace people. And T.D. Jakes explores this and he speaks about how this particular text, this man tries to find a loophole and says, who is my neighbor? And Jesus answers him and says, listen, Consider a, some, uh, consider a man is beaten up, he's beaten up, he is, you know, left, le left for dead on the road, he has nobody else to turn to, and then comes a priest, he passes him by, pass a Levi, he passes him by, and then comes a Samaritan, he takes care of him, he takes him to his house, and, you know, and that's what he does. And then I think this is a tipping point in how his disciples viewed Jesus. He begins to help them understand that your neighbor is not who you think it is. Your neighbor might be somebody who doesn't agree with you politically. Your neighbor might be somebody who doesn't agree with you religiously. Your neighbor might be somebody who doesn't even agree with you, you know, in, in terms of how you live your lifestyle. Your neighbor might be somebody who doesn't even have the same sexuality as you do. Your neighbor might be somebody who doesn't speak the language that you do. Because Samaritans were considered the most unclean people in the world, according to them, that is who he chose. He chose the worst of the worst. He chose the person who is on the other end of the spectrum to show them their neighbor. To show them that God is a barrier-breaking God. To show them that God can use anybody. He says, listen, those people that you are talking about, who you think are neighbors. So what this teaches us and what teaches me is that, this is what I learned also earlier on in my Christianhood, that view people as God views them view people with the eye of love let everything be out of love so that you can fully embrace people because you don't know who god will use next whether you consider people as sinners or not love whether you consider people as unclean or not love whether you consider people your enemies or your friends love love is what we need and love is what will anchor you as a believer once you approach everything out of a place of love you will stop being judgmental you'll stop being self-righteous you will stop doing because once you 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 do everything out of love you realize that people have mistakes and love covers those mistakes love covers those mistakes love always covers love is a coverer so what you need is to love so that you can cover people's mistakes because people are imperfect and as you are imperfect you know i am imperfect personally and i know other people are imperfect <clears throat> And the greatest mistakes that we do as believers is that we don't view people out of love. That's why we are able to extend little grace to them than we extend to ourselves. We are able to forgive ourselves more than we forgive other people because we consider we hold other people to, weirdly enough, a much more higher standard, which is weird for me. But 
we should approach everything out of love. So we should love everybody. But now we're talking about excess. Who should have access to me? You know, I, you, I, I hear you say I should love everybody, but should I give everybody access? No, everybody needs to, people need to pass the fitness test. The closest people around me ideally are people who have character. I qualify character as one of the most important features in somebody. How somebody relates with other human beings. How somebody, you know, talks about other people. How somebody um, handles conflict. How somebody handles themselves. How does somebody think? How self-aware are they? Though all those things, how do they handle relationships? All of those things are packed up into, a, into what we call character. Character is important. And access, for you to give people access, you need to understand their character and their purpose. So, in the 12 disciples, Jesus only took two to the, to the garden of Gethsemane to listen to him pray. For them to have access, they needed to have a purpose in understanding his prayer. So he didn't he didn't take just anybody to listen to his prayer. Sorry to all those who don't speak Soto. Things just come out better in Soto. Uh, so he doesn't just take anybody. He takes all those people he considers to be important to his destiny and to the ministry that he's carrying. And that is important right there. Because once you don't choose just anybody, you begin to realize that people have a purpose. And once people are conscious about the purpose that you have, they're able to assist you better. Because there is nothing as frustrating as walking with people who are blind. That is the second thing. Beyond character, people should be able to see, to foresee, to have the eye to see you. Because there are people who can walk with you but not see you and not recognize you. And that is, it. That is the greatest tragedy. I don't want to walk with people who can't see, who can't see where I am going, who can't see what I am doing, who can't see my latest project, who can't see the end, who can't see what God sees in you. Now that is important because for people to be able to see what, they, what God sees in you, they need number three to be prayerful. You can't keep about Friend who, friends who don't pray are suspicious about everything because they don't have the eye to see. Prayer gives you the eye to see what you need to see. Prayer is important. Prayer gives you the eye to see what other people can see. Therefore, you need people who are able to see because they are prayerful. Those are the three criteria so far that I believe that are important. And then the fourth one is the Bible says that do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. It is very hard to let people into your circle who are unbelievers, especially your closest circle. You can be, you know, they can be on your... I, I, I classify my friends in three ways. Firstly, they are very good close friends, which is my inner circle. They are good friends, which is, you know, on the, on the outer circle. And then I have, you know, acquaintances who are, you know, on the, on the, on the most outer circle. So it is important that your, your close friends are believers. <laughs> and this is going to sound tricky, right? But it is important that your friends are believers and your friends understand your beliefs and understand where you are going galimpi, because, as a believer. Ne? And people who understand your values and who almost have the same values as you do because they are able to enhance that which you are. And as you go into your close friends, you can have a much more diverse group of people, whether unbelievers or not, but also character is important. But right now I'm talking about your close circle. Your close circle needs to have a sense of belief so that they can be prayerful, so that they can be able to see you for who God sees you for, so that they can have character. And those are the most important factors. And how do I know this tabby? So how do I see people? Because I don't have an x-ray. I, I can't tell people who have any character when I see them. That's why it is important for you to vet people before you become their friends. It is important that you pray about people before becoming their friends. It is important that you consider a whole lot before becoming people's friends. Because 
all of those things. Character comes with loyalty. It comes with people understanding to keep secrets. It is, it, they understand that they need to protect you in spaces that you are not in. Those are issues of character and those are not issues that you can so much teach people out along the way. These things are taught in prayer and these things are gotten in prayer. That's why it is important for you to pray about such friends and also to be that kind of friend but lastly, to have people who pray about such things because prayer is important. If prayer is an anchor of your destiny partners, you are able to partner with them in an effective ministry of your life to pursue that which you pursue. And after you are, as you are continuing, you know, pursuing you and doing you, you are able also as they are close friends. So, have good close friends but also be a good close friend because you can't desire that which you are not you need to strive to be the best that you can to the friends that you have so that the friends that you have can nurture that which you have and that is the kind of friendship that i have i do not have any time i have no business being friends with people who don't understand you know who i am also i don't i don't have time to be friends with people who don't understand also reciprocity because I give her the Christmas what feelings saga, or I'm not gifted of the givers with my feelings. I need to invest, you know, emotionally, spiritually, and you know, mentally to friendships that that I understand that will give back unto me and will gratify me. So that is all for today. So thank you so much guys for joining me today. And please check out my Instagram page um, if you want to watch, the, if you want to watch the live that we had two weeks ago about mental health. It will really bless your soul where I had Sihema um, Sego uh, and um, who's a social worker and Musa uh, Kumete who is uh, Miss Soweto 2019. Um, they have great, such great stories and they have such great testimonies and also they have such great advice uh, advice for people who are you know trying to pursue career people who are confused about their career people who are confused about where they are how to have good social media uh, habits and how to live an effective life as a young person because we need to be champions of effective lives so thank you so much for joining us today and have yourself a blessed day